So I was originally going to put up slides, but um, my slide is intentionally left blank. So um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about uh, some of the, the, the things I think that are, for me, that have been really interesting and is around this topic of data, data science, and how do we start making the data come alive? Uh, some of you may have read an article uh, Tom Davenport and I wrote uh, for a Harvard Business Review uh, around this idea that data science is the sexiest uh, term of the 21st century. And that's sort of intended as a, as a somewhat salacious title on attention because we have this big data wave, but who are the people that are going to actually enable data to come alive and actually tell the unique story? And for me, this really leads to an interesting thing, both from the technology side, the product side, there's people that actually own the business and are trying to figure out stuff, is how do you actually start to make data actionable? And if we see this stuff, we've got really great infrastructure that's coming alive. We've got all these kind of new things that are being built, but what's holding us back from this data revolution and the promise of everything that we know can be possible with data? And what I would contend to you is there's a couple very significant things that we need to, as a community, really start thinking about. And the first one of that is how do we start thinking about data and storytelling? And how often can we bring those things together where we're using data to tell a story? How many times have you actually been in a meeting and you're sitting there, might be like right now, and you're sitting there and you're kind of looking at the PowerPoint slide, it's like slide, 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 and they're like, and in this graph you see such and such, and you're like, really? Because all I see is data vomit. Like, you put every type of number, every type of graph. Oh wait, use bubble graphs, now it must be impressive. Oh wait, the bubbles are 3D, that must make it really cool, right? It, it, we just like to make the data sexy from a visualization perspective, but we're not actually telling a story. So when we think about telling a story, what I would encourage you is to think about the following three rules anytime you show data. And I think this is the first step of what some of the things that become important in how we actually tell a story data. And it comes down to the very same way when we give a talk. Well, what's the first thing that we're all taught when we kind of give those basic kind of speech classes back in elementary school or high school or whatever? The first thing they tell you is, well, what do you want me to take away? Well, I'm listening to the talk. What do you want me to take away? What's the insight? What's the idea? What's the big idea that I'm supposed to walk away from? So we're all taught that thing. When we see a piece of data, what do you want me to take away? Is the number good? Is the number bad? Oh, am I supposed to see an insight? Am I supposed to draw some conclusion? What am I supposed to do? Two, what action do you want me to take? What do you want me to do right now when I see the data? Am I supposed to pick up the phone and call somebody? Should I page somebody? Should I call a meeting? Should I decide to change revenue targets? Should I do something different? Most of the time, we love to put data on a dashboard, but very rarely do we actually think about if the number does something, we're supposed to do something. If you drive a car, well, this is New York City, so maybe if you watch a cab driver, right? It, it's, it's at some point, the needle starts to go to zero, and your gas or your fuel gauge, and a red light comes on. What is the action you're supposed to take? Pull over and get gas. It's this very simple connection of things that we're supposed to do. But why don't we do that when we design a dashboard or a data product? And then in particular, I think is the third thing that I think is the one that's most often left out. So the first was, what do you want me to take away? Number two is, what action do you want me to take? And the third one is, how am I supposed to feel when I see that data? Should I feel excited? Should I feel paranoid? Should I feel scared? What do you want me to actually feel? And every single aspect about that should inform the way you actually present or work with data. So if it's a dashboard or a graph, if the numbers aren't good, maybe red is a good color. Maybe the drop shadow should be harsh. If you're looking at something where it's good, maybe green or blues. All those things go into facilitation of what we're trying to say with the story, with the data. When you listen to really great storytellers, this is a common theme, that they always have an aspect of how you're supposed to feel. And so many times we think about that as just putting that into the product as a graph. But that's not how I think we should think about data. Oftentimes, data products, and some of the best data products out there, don't actually have any 
real, tangible number or a graph. Right? One of the most powerful ones is today, flying from San Francisco, where it's a nice, sunny day, and I fly out here, and I'm trying to pack last night frantically and just kind of get some stuff in. What's the thing that we all do when we do it? We open up our iPhone app or whatever, and we look at the weather. Now, I don't know about you, but I at least open up the app that gives me just an icon. It doesn't give me all the barometric pressure readings and all the sophisticated aspects that are coming out of the fluid dynamics model. This is one of the most sophisticated data products out there. We have these supercomputers doing all this massive crunching, trying to take all this information coming from around the world and compartmentalize it into an icon. If it's sunny, it's got a big sun there, and it's kind of radiating. If it's really sunny, it's got sunglasses. It's super slick data product, right? Why? Because you know exactly what to do when you see that icon. You've been trained to interact with it in a way where you actually know what to do. If it's a thunderstorm and it's showing lightning bolts, you are going to feel paranoid that you should probably have an umbrella. It's not just conveying information of what do you want me to take away, the first item. Two, what action do you want to take? I want you to pick up a damn umbrella before you go out the door. Third, how do I want you to feel about it? Paranoid, I want you to take action. On the weekend, I want you to say that nice sound, I want you to feel relaxed, feel good. Feel that like there's opportunity. That's an example of that problem. The second aspect of the storytelling that I'd like to just kind of go into for a couple minutes is this idea that when we're working with data, we have to have an extraordinary amount of training. Anybody go to training recently for HR or one of these other systems, right? Right. What do you do in training? It's like the best time in the world to update your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I <get> updated. <laughs> These guys at LinkedIn, they keep pestering me with these emails to update it. I already checked Twitter, Facebook, right? And then suddenly you get to your desk and you're like, oh, I should have been listening because now I actually got to go find somebody actually use how to use this damn tool. So think about it for a moment. Probably most of you are carrying a smartphone and a tablet. Did you take training for that device? Did you go get a nice, thick man? Did you actually, are anybody willing to fess up that they bought like dummies guide to iPhone, right? Like, we don't do that. Does that device actually ship with a manual anymore? Those, those that remember, like you get these 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 uh, computers a decade, twenty years ago, they came with thick manuals. Right? Partly to make you feel like you actually paid something and got some value out of it. But today, the iPhone or these things, they ship with three, four pieces of paper. There's nothing in there. Why? The product teaches you so. You kind of have to be an idiot to pull out this phone and not realize like there's a giant button there that you're supposed to press. And the first thing it does is just flashes a little thing and says, plug me in. The same way, if you look at any game, so I got my kids, they are amazing at kicking my ass in Angry Birds. I don't think they've ever read any of the instructions in their lives. Why? How did they figure it out? Those products start to teach yourself. When you think about our data products today, how much do our products help somebody who doesn't actually know how to use it? If you create a dashboard or you're walking around with a dashboard inside the company, why isn't there a glossary or something that helps somebody come up to speed very easily? We created this rule called the Zero Overhead Principle when we were working on uh, technologies for national security, in large part because the analysts have no time to take training classes to work with these technologies. So instead, what we said is any technology that comes in has to require zero overhead. It has to teach the user as you go along. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, it's so sophisticated, it's too hard. But the same approach is taken by systems like Google, Facebook, LinkedIn. You don't take classes for this stuff. It teaches you naturally. And so when you combine storytelling and this art of sort of the key things that you want to take away from the product, along with this idea of reducing the friction of a product, that's the key thing that I think is holding us back from actually enabling a more data-driven world and allowing the bigger benefits of coming out of data and data science. Thank you.